Uh, how has spring football progressed for you? Oh, it's been great. It's been great so far. The guys, um, you know, they came, they come every day, of course, ready to work. And it's been a, it's been uh practices where we feel like as, as a staff, we've continued to get better, uh, continue to grow and to continue to get uh, younger guys that we hadn't necessarily seen as much uh, get reps. Uh, we've got quite a few guys who were, um, you know, post-surgery. And so to be able to have them out and watch and, 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 and get mental reps has been good as well. So it's been great so far. We still got a lot of work to do, though. Uh, now that last season's behind you, you mentioned the young guys getting some reps. And um, last year was so strange because you didn't have spring football. But then when you got into the season, a lot of guys who probably wouldn't have played normally got playing time. Uh, how has that benefited you this spring uh, with having that foundation for, for so many players? Wow, let's not talk about last season much. <laughs> but but, but in, in that way, yes, you know, there are guys – I mean, you think about Will having an opportunity, and I know he's on the offensive side of football, but uh, guys like him have an opportunity to play. You know that that experience uh, is going to help us in the future. And, yes, we, we uh, have an opportunity to have spring practice that we didn't have last year is going to benefit us incredibly. And and we've, you know, shared that with our players and, and you know, I said we weren't, we're not going to talk about last year, but as I refer to it in my mind and think about how we were when uh, we were doing meetings on Zooms and uh, couldn't see the players, it was a different, a different place to be in. And so to have the blessing to be able to go out on the field and be around one another and to watch players grow and develop. And like you said, some who didn't have the opportunity to play last, uh, excuse me, who were forced into play last season. Uh, and now, you know, with that season of experience under their belts, we feel like guys are continuing to get better because of that experience. And, uh, you know, as we go into the fall, uh, it, it'll be, we hope, uh, we'll, we'll benefit from that. And then also we have some early enrollees who have uh, come on to the campus and or who are getting opportunity, you know, to be a part of spring practices because last year because we didn't have spring guys like T Denson they didn't get that opportunity but then you know at points in the season were thrown into the fire so uh, it's been refreshing to watch uh, definitely a relief from 2020. Okay uh, your position one of the guys that benefited tremendously from last year was Echo and uh, how is your depth at, at your corner position looking this spring? Well, all of those guys, uh, even with the addition of Julius Brintz, all of those guys have continued to progress throughout the throughout the spring. And so I'm pleased with where we are. Of course, never satisfied as a coach. I want to continually get better. Um, and, and it's an open competition. You know, when, when, when you go into the spring, the thing for a player, as I remember my, my career 89 years ago, uh, you go into the spring with the hopes that that everyone will be on an even playing field, that everyone will get uh, reps and can can put himself in a position to to expand his role on the team. And so that's the challenge that I put forth for Echo, for T. Denson, for Julius, who is a new guy, uh, for uh, my wife's son, Vaughn. Uh, all of those guys to uh, get the opportunity to go out and uh, compete and get reps every day uh, and for them to perform well enough to, to, get, to gain the trust of the staff as well as their teammates, that's essentially uh, important. And you mentioned him. Give me a breakdown of Julius Brents and what he brings to the team. Wow, he's a guy that, uh, first of all, off the field, he's a, he's a kind of young man that, that you want on your team because he takes care of his body. He takes care of his academics. He's a leader. He does a great job uh, throughout the staff uh, in terms of creating, uh, forming relationships. Uh, I don't think I've heard anyone give a bad report about him. So I'm excited as, as a position coach, you know, to have him on our team. But then uh, when you have a transfer come in, uh, a lot of times it takes, it takes a moment before before he opens up and he has friendships within the team. And Julius hadn't been that. 
he's been a guy who's who's really worked hard and earned the respect of his teammates really before they before they even knew him they respected his work and and respected what he was about as a young man as a and as a as a football player so i'm excited about him and and where he uh can grow to be thanks coach appreciate it Kels. Hey, we, we've heard some other coaches talk about preaching fundamentals a little bit more uh, during the spring practice. What are some things you're preaching with the defensive backs uh, that they can get back to in that area? It's, it's that, you know, I think uh, Coach Kleiman would, would talk about the, the need for us as a defense to improve our tackling efficiency. And, and you know, because you coach the defensive backs who play in, a, in areas where they got to make a, a space tackles, so, so that's something that we've really emphasized. We've talked about creating turnovers because to be successful defensively, you're going to have to create turnovers. You're going to have to give the ball back to the offense. And that's something that over the course of my career, I've, I've enjoyed that um, from different defenses that I've had the opportunity to work with. And so that's something that as a, as a defensive staff, we, we consider very important for us to be successful is to stress that. And it's more, what the things that you emphasize are the things that you get. So tackling efficiency, uh, fundamentals of, of creating turnovers, uh, understanding angles to the football, but then our guys uh, really understanding, just just simply understanding football, understanding formations, understanding alignments and splits of the receivers. You, you can never get enough training in that way. And so to have the opportunity uh, to have spring practice and to have our guys hear that, focus on that, emphasize that as a staff, we feel like those those things will help us in the fall and, and, and you know, to not get it uh, one season, you as a coach, when you look at the totality of the season, you look at all the clips, you understand how you could have some shortcomings. And if you guys are able to build more uh, depth at quarter this season, how many would you like to play ideally in each game if everybody's healthy? How many would you like to rotate in and out? Well, you know, when you when you play in the Big 12, you know, the Big 12 conference, many teams operate uh, on the more rep standard. So it, as many guys as you can have to be ready is is really uh, advantageous for your defense. Uh, we, we've played four to five guys, you know, in different games, different points of the season. Also, that position uh, is a big special team source. And so you have guys who are on kickoff. You have guys who are on kickoff return. They're on punt. They're on punt return. And so they're getting many more snaps than just their defensive snaps. So it's important that, that you have four to five, sometimes six guys on the ready, you know, to be able to play in the games. And, you know, again, it, it depends on the situation. But I always look at it as a coach is that, you know, if, you, if guys, if, if you can trust a guy, then he should get out there and he should, you know, be able to play. Uh, we, we always want to have, in crucial situations, we always want to have our best players out there. Uh, but, you know, when, when a guy's playing 75 plays, then, then he's, he's not at his best, right? I think our strength and conditioning staff will do a great job of getting our guys in shape. But, you know, we have to continue to have more guys ready with, you know, with injuries, with COVID. Um, and so, you know, we want to be prepared in that way. You mentioned it just there, special teams at, outside of Phillip Brooks. Is there anybody who's really impressed in the return game this spring? Uh, there's been, there's been a few guys. Uh, Rush East has, has shown up a couple times as a returner. Of course, Deuce has shown up. But, you know, the guy that, that we really lean, and Malik uh, has, has been a guy who's continually uh, done well back there as a returner. Uh, and so, you know, but, but you know, Phillip has, has shown over the course of time that, that he's a guy that, that we can depend on, that, that we can trust in those key situations in terms of uh, as a returner on special teams. And he takes great pride in it, as well as those other guys. But uh, I think at this point, you know, it's, it's still always an open competition. But I think at this point, uh, he's done a lot to set himself above, you know, the other guys. All right. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Derek. 
Yeah, coach, I know you don't directly directly coach them, but what, what are going to be some of your guys' answers at the nickel position? Because that was one of the, the spots on your defense that kind of got picked apart by attrition. Or, or do you think you still need to kind of outsource and maybe find a transfer for that spot? Well, we're always looking for, for you know, good players uh, to transfer and, and play in those positions because you can never get enough of those type guys. Um, and, and again, those are sometimes the guys who, who suffer injuries at different points throughout the season as well. Uh, but I feel like, you know, at, at the safety position, at the corner position is what, is what we talk about in recruiting is that the more value you uh, bring as a player is presented by, um, you know, your ability to be able to play multiple positions. So we've talked as a staff about, you know, being able to move a guy here or there from corner to safety to nickel. Uh, and, and I think there's a number of guys who could play in that position. Uh, but, you know, and that's, and that's what we're actually, as we're going through the, the spring, uh, we are uh, placing different guys in that position just to see, you know, how it shakes out at the end. And if if nothing else, it, it just provides us some safeguards in case we lose a guy to injury at that position or, or even another. So we've, uh, throughout the season as a staff, we've mixed and matched different personnel um, at that position as well as others uh, to be able to um, make sure that we, you know, we, we would find ourselves in a good position. I know I didn't answer your question, but I did that on purpose. Okay, that's fine. Uh, and then, obviously, you were one of the coaches that already knew Coach Carroll before he was hired by Coach Kleiman to be your director of strength and conditioning. Just how, I guess, much of a role did you play in, in that process, and what's he going to mean to your program? Well, I think, you know, as a staff, we, we looked at different guys uh, that, that we could bring uh, in, you know, on to our staff uh, as, as a strength and conditioning director. But when you when you evaluate who we are as a team right now and, and what we specifically need, uh, I feel like it, it just felt like Coach True was the best choice for us. And yes, I've had a relationship. Actually, this would be our third time working together. And um, uh, man, our players have said this in the short time that he's he's been on our staff is that he's someone who cares about him right he he's continually trying to form relationships with them uh he he set forth a goal to to learn their names in in just a few days of course uh he was not successful to to learn 130 guys names in you know two or three days but he continually uh, has has grown those relationships, and I and I I'm sure he knows everyone's name now, um, but but our players have been impressed with Coach True. Um, he he holds them accountable, and um, you know is pushing them and always seeking to find ways for himself to be better. And I, I've been impressed with with that uh, component of True's operation. You know, since I've known him, that he's always pushing to be better. He's always looking for better ways to do things. And uh, unfortunately, you know, it's always the players who benefit from him being that way. And so I, I think that uh, he's going to take our program to another level in terms of strength and conditioning. Uh, but but he's also going to help our players uh, as as they continue to grow on and off the field. Because, you know, I, I believe that that's, that's one of the – one of the things that he he does as well um, is is grow relationships with the players so that they respect him as they walk in there and and allows him to allow him to push them to their limits. Thanks, Coach. John. Can't hear you. Still this is the first question we've had to type it in the chat to get. <laughs> Anybody else want to jump in? Maybe we can get John to disconnect and come back. Go ahead, Ryan. Dr. Monhey, how are you doing today? Ryan, how you doing, man? 
I'm doing pretty well. Um, I hope you don't feel like this is an unfair question. I, I don't think it is. Is I do. Who's who is maybe a guy when you guys have been going up against him on defense? He's maybe not a player who fans know as well that you've been really impressed by his his improvements since the end of last season. Well, wow, there's been a lot of those guys, um, guys on offense who uh, have have been impressive, and you know maybe fans, of course, that that guy who wears 22, he has not been a challenge. Um, uh, so, so I won't put him in the mix at all. Uh, but, but Daniel Bebe, uh, has done a great job. He's physical, you know, on the line of scrimmage, he's physical in coverage and our guys, you know, when you ask him from linebackers to safeties and sometimes corners find themselves mixed up with him, um, he's, he's been quite a challenge. Um, um, Malik, of course, you know, the fans know Malik, uh, but he's he's shown significant improvement. And our guys, you know, continue to talk about him. Keenan Garber, a young player who, who is now an older player, uh, you know, has has really good speed. He's had a, a good spring, you know, from from my guy's perspective. Um, Jacardier Wright has has done a good job coming out of the backfield, blocking as well as running a tough physical runner. And then, uh, and then another running back who's done a good job for us, you know, like I said, from my guy's perspective and really more than from more than his offensive snaps, but he's done a good job on special teams has been uh, Joe Irvin. He's done a, done a really good job. And, and our guys, as well as uh, some of our staff have remarked upon, you know, what he's done out there uh, on special teams. And this is a this is not an age joke, but you're the most senior coach who we're going to get to talk to before the uh, uh, the, the the open public kind of scrimmage uh, Saturday because we won't talk with Coach Klein until till next week. Uh, have you guys maybe talked about what you want to put out there for the fans who are going to show up Saturday? What they might see is it going to be just a regular practice. Are you guys going to have more of a, a purple versus white game, or or have you guys not even got to that point yet? First of all, let's go back to your your age comment. <laughs> I, I resemble that remark, right? And so, um, Buddy Wyatt is actually, he played on the same <laughs> basketball team as Moses, right? So, um, when you talk about age, but anyway, <laughs> uh, no, no, our plan is to, is, is to practice, you know, and, and to do some of the things that, that we've done all spring. Uh, so it won't be in the format of, um, you know, of the orange and white, um, you know, scenario. I said orange and white. <laughs> Why did I say orange and white? Uh, anyway, um, it, it, it will be a, it'll be a practice. Uh, and, and I got it just because that'll be, you know, most beneficial for our guys, for us to be able to take advantage of one more day of practice. We feel like is, is important when, when you do those, those, um, those game scenarios, sometimes you water it down and you don't, you don't, you don't get the benefit of a day of practice. And so it's important for us to use each of these days uh, to continue to grow, to continue to develop, to give our guys the reps really the way they're used to seeing them. Uh, and, and so that's why uh, I think, you know, coach climate wants to uh, hold our practice in this way. It'll be a fun experience for the fans um, because they'll, like I said, they'll get to see our guys in their, in their natural practice element. Uh, and I think, you know, a lot of fans want to be able to see that. And so uh, that, that's another reason that, you know, we're doing it that way. All right, coach. Hey, I appreciate it. Could, could Moses take Wyatt off the dribble? Well, he dunked on him once. Coach Wyatt dunked on Moses. Right. <laughs>